All right. Here we are. We're live. Welcome, everyone, to the uh, live tutorial for Summertime Tic-Tac-Toe with me, Chris. And I'm joined today by my son over here, Caleb. He's also going to make a summertime tic-tac-toe. Um, so today I'm going to be demonstrating the beach themed one. So this one in particular, um, sand, a little surf down here and some shells that I've painted different colors to be the two different, uh, you know, the X's, the O's, you need two different distinctive sides, I guess. So this is what I'll demonstrate today. Um, but I did make several other examples that I can also show you to uh, inspire you if you want to do something different than the beach theme, because you could do like any theme you want. It doesn't necessarily have to be summertime theme either. I just think it just makes sense to make a cute summertime one. And then maybe maybe in the winter you want to make like a Christmas theme, tic-tac-toe. So this is the one I'll demo today. Let's put that here. Here's another example that I uh, made up when I was making that one. A watermelon patch, let's call that. So I just went to my garden and found some rocks that reminded me of watermelons. And I made dark green and, and light green watermelons as an idea. And the tic-tac-toe board is like sticks or vines. And I added some green dabs of paint all around. It could be like moss. And um, yeah, this one's a heart shape. That one was a circle. You could do any shape. And then let me show you one more example that I've already finished on Caleb's side here. Ladybugs and bumblebees on flowers. This one's also on a heart. And I added like a little bit of this dollar store vine garland around the outside. And I added flowers as like the, the nine different spots. So there's not really the tic-tac-toe board, the traditional one in a sense, it's just flowers as the different playing spots. So that's an example. And I just selected um, some pieces that looked more oblong, rocks from the garden that looked more like bees versus rounder rocks that look like ladybugs. And that's how I made that one. So those are just three examples. You could come up with like anything you want, maybe um, beach balls as the playing pieces, maybe um, a completely different theme, food theme, maybe donuts, maybe candy, um, maybe little fish, make the pieces fish and make the board look like the ocean or something, literally anything. What about um, instead of using rocks or shells, you got your hands on uh, dried starfish and sand dollars, and then I did a beach underneath. That would be very cool. Let's put, I'll put this over here. If anyone um, at any point wants to maybe see um, one of those examples again, I could hold it up. Those are just for inspiration. And then, so this is the one I'm going to do today. I'm going to do it on a heart, and I am going to do the beach theme with the seashells. So here I have the seashells. I kind of selected um, nine that would be sort of the same size, because I think having the same size is the best. There's too much light here. Why is it all so bright here? Um, I also have another example in progress. While we were at the dollar store, I found this hexagon shaped um like it was an inspirational plaque um but i thought hexagon i thought bees i could do bees on a hive kind of a look so i've got some rocks that i'm going to do up as bees so i might do that one while we're doing this one kind of work back and forth or maybe just focus on the beach one caleb's gonna do shells and he's got a circle over there and I think you're going to add some other embellishments. So in this little bin, we've got um, silk flowers or paper flowers, some garland from the dollar store. 
googly eyes. That's an interesting thing to add. I could add them even to the bees that I have over there. More rocks. Um, I did grab my sea sponges. And those are great for adding texture by dabbing the sponge into paint and then dabbing it wherever you want. Nice texture. What about moss? We saw this when we are at the, the dollar store. Moss, maybe around the edge. You can hot glue some moss around the edge. Any of your things. I also got some bubble wrap. I think if I put paint on this bubble wrap and then press it, press it onto my hexagon, it'll maybe look like the cells of a beehive. Um, I've got hot glue nearby. We've got our uh, acrylic paints. We've got the standard black and white, red, yellow, blue. Caleb's got a bit of pink on there too. As an option, we've got our water, we've got our paper towel, we've got our, our brushes, just a little handful of brushes. Um, I guess I could, I'm going to power up the hot glue gun for later. We do need some hot glue later. Plug that in to warm up. If we want to glue on flowers or what about, what other supplies? Sequins, beads, stickers, um, anything. You just kind of wander around the dollar store and see what kind of things inspire you. Any theme? Oh, we've got paint markers. Paint markers are great. It's acrylic paint and a pen. So we'll use some of those too. And then later, if you wanted to, like to, to seal your paint on your rock, if you don't want it to like chip off, um, a clear coat of some kind, a protective top coat, take that outside, spray them, let them dry, and then it'll be nice and uh, protected, hopefully, from wear and tear. So let's do our, I'm going to do beach, and Caleb will do his own thing over there. Okay, let's get this guy, well, we'll put this guy here, my example, and then this is the one I'll be working on over here. Now I have painted this white in advance. You don't have to paint this white in advance. Um, you could just leave it as it is. Mine had words on it, quite dark black words. That's why I painted it white in advance. But as long as you're putting a color on here that has some white in it, so this sand color does have some white in it, it should be able to cover up your words if there are words on it. Or if you'd prefer to do a coat of white beforehand, you can hit pause on this live stream. Hit pause, paint it white, and when that's dry, rejoin us. You could rewind any portion of this live event, see something again, or just hit pause to sort of catch up to where we're at. You don't have to go blazingly fast at all. So I'm going to mix up a sand color first. Let's put my little shells here. This would be a good sand color. I like to start my brown for sand by making orange. Orange. So I'm going to get a little bit of red, much more yellow. I'm going to make a bit of orange. You just need a smidge of red to turn your yellow quite orange. We're making sand. So I like to start with orange and then make brown. So there's a bit of orange. And to the orange, sometimes I'll add blue, sometimes I'll add black, sometimes I'll add both. There's a little blue, there's a little black into my orange. And it's gonna make a poopy brown color, not a nice color. Sometimes it looks like baby poo. Here's a nice brown, kind of dark, but we're gonna lighten it. We're gonna lighten it to make sand. Here's some brown for sand. And I'm gonna get a good scoop of white, lighten that up. And of course, there's so many different beaches in the world with different colors of sand. There are white beaches, black beaches, pink beaches, um, beaches that are all sea glass, if you can believe it. So there's kind of a tan, sandy color. 
the glare. Um, you can add more yellow in there to kind of warm it up. You could add more white to lighten it up. That's pretty good. And it's up to you how much of this shape that you're going to paint as sand and how much is going to be water. So in this, let me just go like this. Get rid of those. Get out of here. On this one, I did like less water, more sand. But that's up to you. You could have half and half. It could be half and half for sure. And it could be the top half is sand and the bottom half is waves or whatever you want to do. And it's okay if maybe you didn't fully mix your sand color and there's darker patches or lighter patches. That's fine. The sand is all different shades and there's all different bits of crushed rocks, crushed shells. So it's not gonna be perfectly even. I think I might go for like a half and half on this particular one. So a little more even between water and sand, but that's just me. You do you. If you are indeed doing sand, maybe you're going to do one of the other ideas or a completely new idea. I'd love to see that too. What about a cool, it could be on an angle. It could be like diagonal. Yeah, that's a good Sand color. I am also going to do the edge. If you have a thick edge like this one, this one's super thick, the hexagon that I picked up, that's like at least an inch and a half, not two inches thick. I do like to do the edge. This little like hanger string, I did keep it on the other ones, but you could totally cut that off because it doesn't really make sense that you would hang a tic-tac-toe. So I'm painting all the way around the edge. And again, it's okay if it's a little bit patchy, a little bit uneven. We're also gonna dab some other colors, make it kind of speckly. Oh, Caleb is doing uh, like a sunset effect over there. I like it. And I've spread my paint pretty thin. It's going to dry really quick, especially in this heat. There, so I've got the edge. That's by the sand there. Yeah, might as well just use up some more of this. Spread it thin. It'll dry. The edge is messy, but it's going to be like wavy, wavy foam, splashy foam. So that's okay if the edge is uneven. There's my sand color. There, I like that. And then uh, we're going to do the ocean on the other half. Your ocean could be deep blue, baby blue, maybe a little twinge of green in there too. Anything you want. So I've got some blue. Let's add a little white with the blue. Test it out, see if you like that shade. That's pretty good. And yeah, when I'm painting down here in the water, it's especially okay that it's a little bit streaky or not fully mixed because we want it to kind of look like water. So if there's a little bit of a dark patch, light patch, and I'm just kind of, I'm not painting it directly right next to my sand for this current minute. I'm going to add white there to kind of cover up that gap. I got 
some blue on my seashells. I could do blue seashells. I don't have to stick with these color seashells. Let's move over here. And again, I am going to do the edges of my board here with blue. Just to give it a finished look on the edge. But you might be working with maybe a thinner shape. There's so many different things at the dollar store that we could have bought to paint on, right? It's all different kinds of shapes and thicknesses. That's, uh, wow, that's quite the sunset color. It got really dark at the top there. Lovely. Caleb's also going to do seashells. He's pre-painted his white. I didn't pre-paint mine, but that's okay. Yes. Yeah, so my blue is kind of streaky. There's darker bits, lighter bits. It's going to give me kind of a watery look. If anyone's doing like a different sort of a theme than anything I've mentioned, I'd love to hear what kind of a theme idea you've come up with. Maybe let us know in the live chat there. If there's any kids joining us today, let me know how old you guys are. I'd love to know just how young our audience is. And how is your summer going so far? So there's my ocean. Got the sides, kind of streaky. There's a gap here. I'm gonna dab some white paint to be the frothy, foamy waves. There we go, getting messy already. While that dries a little bit, get over there. I will start um, working on my nine playing pieces for the tic-tac-toe. Uh, four of one color, five of another color, even though it's like an uneven amount. Who, like you can kind of like trade like who's what color and then whoever has like the five would maybe go first, let's say. What colors today? So I've got pink and orange as examples there. What about yellow could be cute, I think yellow, purple. purple, I was thinking like green, There's so many different options. Let me I'll right. probably first start with yellow because I like the idea of yellow for sure. Do you want four or five yellow? Let's do, I'll do five yellow. So um, I haven't pre-painted my shells. There, there's some darkness on them. I will add white to my yellow, mix yellow and white together. So that ensures that it covers up any markings on my, I want to put, I want to put something down. Let's put some scrap paper down. Just some scrap paper. I'm going to, so I can easily kind of transport these little guys on a piece of paper. Okay, get out of here, you. So we've got white and yellow mixed together. And, you know, you might have to do two coats. See what happens when it dries. You could also paint like the underside. I haven't painted the underside of my shells. I just left them blank underneath, but Oops, you could definitely do that. 
And you could add any like patterns you want. Um, you don't have to paint your shells like shells. What if you actually want to put X's and O's on your playing pieces? You totally could. Or hearts and stars and stripes and whatever you want. I made them look like shells, even though they are shells. So my yellow, you can kind of see the, the shell markings through it, but could give it a second coat in a little bit. Got five yellow, and then I think uh, green might be cute. I'm going to add a little smidge of blue to my yellow. Make a little bit of a light green. or dark green, whatever, whatever you feel like. Your pieces could all be, I guess, the same color, but then decorated different so that you know what the two sides are. else could you use as your pieces? We've got shells, we've got rocks. What about if you found like little mini figurines? You could use that as your playing pieces. Um, I mentioned like dried starfish or dried um, sand dollars, if you're going beach theme. What else could you use as like a playing piece? Anything small? Anything small. You could use erasers. Like erasers, yeah, yeah, yeah. Like those collectible different shaped erasers. I was about to say marbles, but that would not work. They would just roll away. But what about those like kind of glass gems that are, it's like a marble, but like kind of squashed down. Yeah, the little pebbles. Yeah, those little pebbles. Glass pebbles. There's my, so I've got yellow shells, green shells. That's kind of cute. I'll let that dry a little bit. We had a suggestion from Anime Peaches, tiny sand art bottles. Wow, yes, I love that. Sand art kind of goes with that beach theme. That'd be adorable. Okay. See, now that I have them on the piece of paper, I can just kind of pick them up, put them over here to dry for a few minutes. Now this guy, this is all dry here, yeah. Bring this guy back in here. This is pretty dry. I'm gonna dab some white for my wavy, frothy foam action. Now, if you don't have like a sponge or a sea sponge, you could dab with a paintbrush. Get a get a stiff bristled brush or a small brush and just dab, dab, dab. Going for kind of frothy, white, bubbly texture. So I've got this sea sponge. You can use kind of like any side of it. Get a little white. Get a little bit, a little bit. And then I like to dab the sponge on, well, I'll dab it on the, on the tablecloth for now or on a piece of paper just to kind of get most of the paint off. And then as I'm dabbing, I'm kind of turning my wrist, doing different angles. So you don't always get the exact same sponge print all the way along. So it doesn't look like, I don't know. I want it random is the goal here. Random blobby dabs. And then if I redip it, maybe I'll redip like a different portion of the sponge to get a different texture. Don't forget your edge to tie it all together. And some of these little dabs are going onto my beach sand. Some of them are going onto the ocean. 
kind of filling in that gap between the two. It's been kind of bubbly, frothy. You could also use this a sponge for kind of a mossy effect around the outside if you're doing maybe more of a nature themed one. Ooh, wouldn't it be cute if you got little rocks and did little mushroom tops, painted your rocks like little toadstool tops and had kind of a mossy, ooh, Caleb's got pride flag shells, love it. And then what's the other um, side gonna be? Pride flag versus Thinking non-binary. Non-binary trans and non-binary. Love it. That's awesome. Yeah, Pride Parade is coming up in we're in London, Ontario. So the Pride Parade is in July instead of June. That's coming up. Uh not this weekend, but next, I think. We should go. We should go. If I'm not giving birth. There's my little kind of frothy edge. So some bits are on the brown, some bits are on the white. But then you could also do like more above, below. <coughs> Pardon me. Because there might be, you know, different, different waves rolling in. Make it your own. Even I could just kind of drag my sponge and make kind of streakies or drag your paintbrush and make streaks. There's another little wave. There's some white streaks there. I can get some on the side here to blend it all. Even some foam up on the beach itself. Residual, residual foam. Yeah, I like this because he's got like more half and half water to beach versus this one. Um, I'll also get a little blue, a little dark blue or medium blue. And it's okay if my sponge is, is dirty I'll just dab it right in there. Dab it on dab it on the dab it on the tablecloth a little bit. Anywhere. Put some dark blue. Ooh, maybe even some like minty green dabs. Aqua color dabs. And streaks, I'm gonna even streak it, drag my sponge. Experiment with light pressure versus firm pressure. You get a different effect. Got some really dark bits, some lighter bits. I gotta get the side a little bit. And because we've done this like lightly dabbing, this will dry really quickly too. That's cute. Okay. Um, I mean, I have. If you, if you only have like one sponge, you can go rinse that sponge in the sink for doing more colors, but I have, I have more sponges so I can afford to just let that guy simmer a little bit and I'll rinse him out later. I wanna add texture into the sand. I don't want the sand to just look flat because this ocean has so much dimension. I want, I want that up here too. Um, yeah, so it's it's pretty subtle. Yeah, I think you can see there's little tiny dabs of darker brown, maybe gray, maybe white, could be even yellow. Little flicks and just very light to give it a sandy look. Let me mix up a little. 
If you still have some of the light brown on your palette, uh, you can use that and just darken it with some more black. But mine was all kind of dried up, so I made a little bit more darker brown. We don't need a lot, just enough to dip our sponge in. That's a good angle here. Again, I'm going to dab it, but then kind of dab some of it off on the tablecloth so it's not too blubby. And just light little speckles of darker sand. What else could you add to this? You could um, paint on your sand like starfish or shells or anything really. I'm just going to do kind of like a sand texture and then that seaweed as my tic-tac-toe board. But you could add anything. Add some cute um, flip-flops. That would be adorable. Okay, there's some brown kind of speckled here and there. I will do some of the side too. But then I'll also do maybe some yellow, maybe some brown, uh, black, maybe some white. Okay, there's some brown, let's do. Like light, light. Tan. Yeah, it's kind of like a yellowy tan sandy color. Teeny bit of black, but I dab it, and then again, I'll dab, dab the tablecloth to get most of it off. Do maybe some white right over here. Just find a blank spot of your sponge. You could really dab like any colors. Um, get some green in there. Some white. It's looking more textured. about maybe just yellow. Oh, yellow's nice. Yellow brightens it up a little bit. And you decide how much texture you want in the sand, I think. I'm just about there. And of course, I've been neglecting my sides. So the sides are lacking a lot of colors. There we go. That's pretty good. There we go, I'll let that dry a little bit. Um, again, if anyone wanted to see any of the other examples that I had shown earlier, like the 
ladybug and bees on the flower or that little watermelon patch. I could show you that again if you wanted a closer view. I'm going to work on my shells a bit more again. They're yeah, getting nice and dry. Probably going to do a second coat so that they're kind of fully coated, no streakies. Oh, we're going to do some spray. Okay. So Caleb's got all of his little, his little flag shells, and he's going to do some misty spray on his sunset background. Yes, exactly stars. Oh, I see. Um, you didn't do the sides, man. I'll do the sides after, <laughs> okay? I'll just color them black. Oh, sure, 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 sure. I'll wait for this all to dry first. Yeah, second coat is going to really help my shells be nice and bright. And then I'll add details to my shells with the sponge with the paint pens. Good. I probably might also start working on that honeycomb idea off to the side here might as well while the paints are out while we're crafting the evening away i might as well start a new a new idea there we go so i've got a second coat on my shells let's put them over here okay that's drying but yeah the other idea i had was this hexagon shape with bees, and this is like the queen bee. I can start on the honeycomb. Might as well. Yellow, I think. Even though the bees will be yellow. I could do the bees colorful. Pink and blue bees, green, purple bees. I might try that. Are any of your friends out there watching? He's trying to find it. Oh, <laughs> can't find it. So I think for this honeycomb idea that I have on this tic-tac-toe, I'll do some bubble wrap impression as kind of a background pattern. And then I'll, for the tic-tac-toe spots, I'll do like hexagon shapes. So each bee has its own little hexagon. These can make a cute gift for like a summer birthday gift or like bring it to the cottage. Bring the supplies up to a cottage and then you have a cottage game to play after the crafting is done. Good for kids too. They could just invent their own tic-tac-toe theme. doesn't have to be like one of the themes we're doing. Cute. 
did uh, kind of a yellow hexagon all around. What else could I add to that? Brown. Brown. What if I dab some brown? Interesting. Yeah, I'm just dabbing some brown around the edges, all the edges of my hexagon. Hard to see with the clay. There we go. Kind of ages it, I think. That little darker edge. About if you had like a thick one like this, this is really thick piece of wood. Paint it like a cake, and then on top you could have I don't know decorations, um, maybe cherries. Colorful candies on a cake. My yellow hexagon with kind of dabbled edges. Did all the way around the sides. I think I got it all. Okay, let's let that dry. Ugh. My little bees. I've got a queen bee, a bigger rock than the others. Yeah, if I do yellow bees, they might get lost. So I'll probably make multicolored bees. So here's my bees from my other, my other set. Bumblebees versus ladybugs. I did the bee all yellow and then a black head. And I did the underside too. And then with the paint pen, paint marker, did the stripes kind of like textured. Added some wings, added some eyes. Just an idea. You could do um, googly eyes. We got Google eye, googly eyes. We could glue those on later. All right, I think I will do. Pink bees. I'll just get a coat on some of these bees and we'll go back to my beach theme. Because the, uh, oh yeah, the shells are still definitely drying. How many pink bees do I want? Four or five? Those would be nice flowers. Mm -hmm. The hot glue gun is way over here. Oh. 
I'll do a big pink bee as my queen bee. coat. So I'll probably let these guys dry, the tops dry, and then I'll flip them over and paint the bottoms and then do the details later. This guy needs another coat. He has a bit of a tumble. Okay, let's put these over here. How are these guys doing? And Amy's question is uh, base. I'm painting on, we just found these at the dollar store. Um, this is a heart shape. It was like a wooden plaque that you could like hang on the wall and it had some inspirational phrase on it. But we just painted right over that. <laughs> And then there was like a circle one. There was um, this kind of hexagon one. Happiness. What does it say? Something about happiness jump all over you. Let happiness jump all over you was the phrase on that one. <laughs> that was funny. Yeah, just any wooden shape, anything sturdy from the dollar store is what we uh, got. That looks good, Caleb, yeah. Oh, he's even got the, the shell, um, what would those be called? Veins. Yeah. Okay, these are still wet. Let me, I'm gonna put the, the seaweed kind of grid board on this, cause this is dry. I used my paint markers. These are by Posca. You could use, paint markers like this, paint pens, or use a thin brush and some of your acrylic paint. So I made mine to be kind of like seaweed. And I did some green, some black, maybe some brown. I did some little dots in amongst the seaweed there too. Hi, Jeremy, thanks for joining us. Or anything else, maybe you wanna do like driftwood as the grid or pebbles, draw some little pebbles as your grid. Or what about something funny like um, you could paint pool noodles as your tic-tac-toe grid. Anything else you could come up with? Um, I have no idea. Whatever you come up with that seems like it might be on a beach, you could totally do that. I'm gonna do a bunch of squiggly lines to be seaweed. Gotta shake it up, gotta kind of activate the marker. I'm going to turn it this way so I'm looking at what I'm doing. You know what else is good? If you put your pieces sort of in position, I'll just use these guys for now because the other ones are still wet. If you put your pieces in position before you do the lines, then you have a better idea of where your lines have to go. And I like 
to kind of make it even. Use up, use up as much space as you can. Okay, so there, there we go. So if your pieces are dry, dry enough to place on here, put them on there and then draw your grid so you make the grid big enough. Just like that, I'll get rid of those. And I'll add, you know, more seaweed, make it really wacky and tangled up and twisted. And I'll use different colors. If you don't have the paint pens, paint markers, just grab any colors with your, br your brush. Light green, dark green, black, brown. I bet there's even like red seaweed, purple seaweed. There's some green. What about some yellow? And it could overlap and mix and blend. My lines are all squiggly, messy. I guess you could add like leaves. Mine are just more like vines. Um, what about what about black? What about brown? The black really stands out and makes it kind of pop. Yeah, it's more visible with the black. Amy has a good question. Amy's question, uh, I did mention like, you know, other versions of this, Christmas versions. What about Halloween version? Anything really. So what about for Christmas? You could make um, maybe get round pebbles and make them look like like round um, baubles on the tree, Christmas ornament baubles, or make them look like mints or wreaths or I don't know. Maybe you could make um, that um, what is it called? Like Fimo, the stuff that you bake in the oven. You can make little shapes out of that clay that you can sculpt and bake in the oven. Fimo or Sculpey, or I'm sure there's other brands. Make any little mini. And then what could you do for the board itself? You could do a, a circle with a wreath. You could do um, maybe like a like snow would be white, but you could like, and I'll put some footprints in the snow would be cute. What other colors? I mean, there's got to be some, there's got to be some seaweed out there that's a little bit purple. Let me put some purple in here. What else is Christmassy? Um, maybe find some square, maybe wooden shapes and make little presents. Purple seaweed. That looks cool. What about, um, I could do dots too. Like there could be little, like some see we'd have little bubbles and dots on them. Let's do some of those, let's do some green. Oh, Caleb's got a cute kitty cat. 
kitty cat in the center. That's cute. He's getting very creative over there. Dots, maybe some white or yellow. Dot, 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 dot. Uh, Amy's question. Yeah, no, today we're going to demonstrate this beach idea. And then I will also maybe finish off those little bees that I was doing on this on this hexagon one. Those are the two that I'll be working on today. But just to inspire you to make something else that I don't demonstrate, just spitballing some ideas. If you do make a, a different version, I would love to see it if you uh, join our artist palette painting slash drawing support group. It's a great place to share any projects, tutorials you've followed with us. That's cute. There's my, what do we got? Greens, black, purple, yellow, white. All kinds of different CVD colors. You can add leaves, you could add other beach debris, driftwood. That's pretty cute. I want to work, work on these guys a little bit. Yep, dry enough. I'm going to add maybe some brown or orange to my seashells with my sponge. Let's get a new fresh clean sponge. Whatever color that you've chosen on your seashells, if you have seashells, I'm just going to like dab like a darker color just for like this guy here. This guy's got some red kind of dabbed along the edge. And then I added some paint pens afterwards. So just like on the edge, some dabs. It could be messy. Oops, get off my hand. And this will dry really quick too. If you don't have a sponge, just jab at it with a stiff bristled brush. Are we going to play tic-tac-toe on this afterwards, asked Jeremy. I think so. <laughs> I think so. Yeah. I think the, the little dabbed edge gives it a little more texture shading. So there's the brown. I did brown on the yellow. And on the green... Maybe some bluey, bluey brownie. Just something darker than what it currently is. Greeny, bluey, browny color here. Anything darker. That's kind of cute. I like that. Oops. Yeah. crazy there. That's all right. My shells have a little bit more 
texture to them. We'll let them dry half a minute and I'll add some lines on them to make them look more like shells, <laughs> even though they are shells, but sort of those indentations, those veins that run up the shells. And yeah, this board is all dry. This board's dry, the yellow hexagon for my bees. I'm gonna try that thing that I was thinking of, putting some paint on the bubble wrap and making like a imprint. So maybe it'll look like honeycomb. Who knows, it might work. Make some brownish orange. might look weird but we're trying it we're gonna see what it looks like and then if you like the look then you could do it on your own okay I want a brush that's wide a wide brush yeah like that okay let me skim this I'm gonna put a light amount of paint on this bubble wrap Big enough for this to fit a bit bigger. Okay, is that big enough? I don't want my paint to dry before I stamp it on here. Okay, let's try it. So I've got paint on the bubble wrap. Here's my hexagon. A great experiment. Let's line it up sort of. Lightly press. Will it look like honeycomb or will it look weird? I mean, I'm not yeah. angry at it. There's some globbies. There's some missing bits. But at a glance, it's kind of honeycomb-ish. There's a massive glob over there. What am I going to do about that? Get it with a tissue. That's a big glob. Get rid of that glob. It has like a rustic feel to it. What if I took that and just put a little bit, if I line it up. That kind of works. It's getting quite dry. I'm not mad at that. That's some pretty interesting honeycomb. The rocks, Jeremy, we made um, bees. Where's my bees? Bees. I mean, bees. well, here's a big fat bee I made earlier, Jeremy. Out of a rock. All right, that's looking cute. That'll dry quickly. Yeah, if you like that look of the bubble wrap, try that out. The next package you get, save the bubble wrap. Is it straight? No, but that's pretty good. Yes. It's going to be cute. All right, these are dry. I'm going to add some details with my paint pens. Um, maybe orange. Orange lines. Uh, yeah, just to make it look like it has those indentations of seashells. Cute. Like 
like these are scallop shells, but they're not. They're pretty smooth. And it kind of looks like the Shell gas station logo. <laughs> Take much more time adding details to your pieces, shells or bees or ladybugs. There's some orange. I'm going to add maybe dark blue or dark green. Let me see what dark blue looks like. pen. It's a little bit goopy. Are you gonna hot glue some flowers onto yours there? Yeah. Yeah. If you bring it, bring it to the hot glue over here. The edges are still a bit wet around. Oh, around. Oh, okay. I've already smudged the white from it. <laughs> oh yeah. dry a moment. I'll add a little yellow or white as highlight to uh, white. Adding some more little streakies in my water. My white paint pen, make it more wavy. Guys need a little, little white is like highlight. It's hard to see the white against the yellow. Let's do white on one of the green ones so you can see it better. Okay, here's a green one. Add some white kind of from the top outward. It's hard to see too. It's got a lot of glare. Again, you can add highlight with white paint and your brush or a different color, like a yellow. Maybe a light pink. Depends on the color of your shells.
dry. These are pretty dry. I can put them on my little board. Yellow versus green shells, and I've got my original oh, hot glue flowers. Hot glue, good idea. All right, so there's the original beach example. The new beach example. I like that one. I like the color of the sand. A little bit darker than this sand. That's good. Now let's get our, our bees back. Ooh. Pink and blue bees. I might, I might skip painting the undersides of them because that's boring probably add their heads and bodies in black now. Yeah, so paint any any amount of that black as their head. It could be like comically big. It doesn't have to be proportionate. Especially if I'm going to add googly eyes to these bees. Good. Oh, it's looking cute. I like the colors. Caleb's adding the, um, they're not silk flowers. I think they're paper flowers, but silk flowers would totally work as well. I might add some, oh, to my B one on the edges, maybe. Okay, there's my pink B heads. I'll do the blue B heads. And I'll also add their stripes. How did I get them all cookie? There's a little bee body. So let's get my black, black pen. There we go. So we'll add stripes, but I'll do it in like a a fuzzy way because bees are fuzzy so just little little lines little marks little tick marks oh nice flower decoration on the end of that one caleb so there's like one stripe of my bee just a series of hash marks all lined up and do as many stripes on the bee as you need. I think I prefer to do like more stripes. Well, no, not more. Less stripes, but wider. Okay, there's my, that's my queen bee. But your bees could be all, all the same size, of course. I just thought it'd be cute to have like a really big one. On your pen.
Have you put your pieces on the board? How does it look? Um, they look good. Good. Oh, that looks really good. Nice and bright. I like the kitty. It's cute. And as I said, you could take much more time detailing every little thing you want to add on these give them all you could give them all different accessories or different personalities little expressions okay now all my bees are striping they're looking cute um i did have I did have some wings on these bees with white paint pen, and then I put black paint pen over top. <sighs> these are a little wet still. But I think it's gonna look cute on here. Let's put this guy over here. Let's get this one involved. Um, I do need to make the playing area. Hmm. I said I wanted to do hexagon shapes. How am I going to do that? Paintbrush. Paintbrush and I'll do hexagons. What would be a good way to make a hexagon? Can I have those scissors, please? Yeah. Okay. If I make a hexagon shape cutout and then trace the cutout, not symmetrical. Let me fix that. I mean, that's not the worst looking hexagon I've ever seen. That's not bad. And I could trace my cutout. doing it kind of wispy, giving it the kind of rustic, messy, wispy paint, very thin. That's pretty cute. I'll do, see if I can get nine of these on here. Oh, I'm going to run out of room, aren't I? Maybe I should have made it smaller. I could make it smaller for the surrounding ones. It's a little smaller. I like it. Okay, I'm going to do it.
This one's going off the thing a little bit. That's all right. You still know what's going on. That looks kind of honeycombish. little bumblebee. Yep, cute. I think I'm going to add some black to this too for just more shading. Sort of my three by three grid of hexagons as best I could get them on there. It's not perfect. I'm going to add a little, a little black. Let's see if it's a mistake or not. I like that. That's cute. And then I was thinking of adding some flowers. Can I have um, a couple flowers? Um, maybe just red. What about this? That's kind of like, it's really close to that color. So I'm going to just do red. Anymore. Um, no, that'll be good. We'll do a couple of flowers here. Nothing too wild.
can't these bees? I mean, they need eyes. They need wings, but just let's have a look at them on here. Oh, that's adorable. They need wings and eyes, but that's looking good. I like that. Let's finish those guys off. And then we'll have two complete ideas here. I'm just going to draw wings with white. Give the wings a little bit of veins. And they're hard to see. There's the white against the pink and the black. But then if I do black as well, it'll help. It'll help. Let's just say that. It'll help. Oh, these guys are so tiny. And he's going to make them real small. Nice bee. Is it like peach? Peach bee? I don't know. It kept on putting colors on it until it turned peach. Okay. Okay, there's my white. Oops. Um, I want to do white eyes with paint. Do you have like clean white on yours? Yes. I would like some clean white. Oh, you got lots of clean white. We dotted some eyes. I'll wait till that dries before I dot like little pupils. Oh, googly I eyes. forgot I had googly eyes. I forgot. Um, the googles. Uh, I don't know. They might be a little big because, like, look at how look at how small this guy is. Let me oh, see the googly why? eyes. Oh my gosh, that'd be like no. There's no way I could fit two of those on here. That's insane. Put some glory eyes on the queen and only okay, the queen. Maybe the queen. Queen and only the queen. Maybe. They have the scissors. Yep. little eyes on my little bees. Where's the black? The black or silver? Silver. Where's my black? Oh, oh this. Never mind. I'm stupid.
So yeah, I'm just putting some black on the wings, which does kind of cover up some of the white, but I'm trying to leave most of the white showing. But even if you just have a little white showing us, you get the gist of it. I'll show you the queen bee. It's kind of the biggest. You can still sort of see the white lines that I made earlier. Or you can just paint like white, like oval shaped wings and then add the black. Who is that? No, it's not that. Cat is tearing up the carpet when there's two cat scratch posts in view. I think these are turning out just adorably. I hope that you guys at home are crafting some adorable tic-tac-toes as well. And it's okay if they're a little messy, it gives it that homemade feel. All right, that's looking so cute. I am going to wait to do the eye pupils with the black paint pen. And I will post photos of these in our Facebook group. Um, I'll put the link. Did I put the link in the chat? I have not. It might also be in the description as well. Uh, but please feel free to join our Facebook group, share photos of, of this activity or any other tutorial. And we'd love to see it. So in the chat, I've just put the link there. Please feel free to share with us. All right, let's have a look at all the different ones we completed. Bring that a little closer. Yeah. We got this one, we've got that's the original one. I've still got like vine, I could add like vines to like around here or something. I've got moss, I could stick some moss. Other flowers, stickers, so we've got that one. Let's bring back that watermelon one. There's that watermelon patch. And then the last one over here. Ladybugs and bees on flowers. Can we fit that over here? Oh, sorry, bee. An extra bee. There you go. Look at all the different sets we have. We could hand them out to all of our friends and family. I want to say thanks for joining us today. Um, I am really excited to see what you guys have come up with, what themes you've come up with, summary or not. Um, the next time you'll see, see me on YouTube Live will be uh, more than a month away. Let me show you what's coming up with me next month. I'm going to take some time off for the birth. So the next time you'll see me will be uh, August 24th uh, on YouTube Live right here. Yeah, August 24th. Free event and kind of a similar theme to today's uh, beach tic-tac-toe. Uh, where, where are we at? Here we are. We're going to do this one. I called it Beachy Waves. I, it's not on the website yet. I just made it today. So join me for this free event, August 24th is the next time I'll be back teaching. Because, you know, we need to recover. <laughs> and that'll be watercolor. We'll do watercolor, we'll do sand, we'll do ocean. So similar to uh, what we did here today, but in watercolor. All right, any questions before this live stream ends? Type it in the chat. Otherwise, you could message us on Facebook or email us, and we could answer any questions you have. 
or, uh, or email, email us pictures of your tic-tac-toe. I'd love to see it. Any questions? Nothing yet. Well, you guys can reach us uh, if you do have some questions. Uh, enjoy, enjoy the rest of your evening. Crafting away, painting away. Hope you had fun tonight with me. And we'll see you in August. Take care, guys. Bye now. <laughs>